back um, earlier today. He could see his boys now. He just be smiling. That's right. You know. So it's, it's it's always a blessing. It's always a blessing. Hey, th thank you, Miss Brown. You know, West Haven has been well represented. You wouldn't have to make me for a girl, Brown. <laughs> I'm honored to be here, giving honor to God, and it's always a pleasure to represent the uh, woman who uh, made this love march uh, a part of American history. Yeah. Yeah. The Congresswoman today is on Capitol Hill uh, doing what she's elected to do, and unfortunately could not be here, but sends her own words. Dear friends, today we celebrate the birth of one of our nation's greatest heroes, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We also look ahead to the realization of all that Dr. King fought and ultimately died for. Yet in just five days, President-elect Barack Obama will take the oath of office and become the 44th President of the United States of America shattering the barriers that have held us back for years. Dr. King once said that a genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus. In Barack Obama, we have found a genuine leader. Our nation has come such a long way since the days of Brown versus the Board of Education, the Montgomery bus boycott, and the Freedom Rides, and further still from the singing, the signing of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. However, that is not to say that the seeds of hate that were sown throughout our history have disappeared. Many of you here today were a witness to the turbulent times of the civil rights movement, yet many more have only the lessons of history to guide them. This year, we have much to celebrate, but we have even more to teach. We must continue our efforts to understand the struggles of all those who fight for equality whether it is because of race, gender, age, or sexual orientation. And we must strengthen our resolve to ensure opportunity for every American. Dr. King's actions stand as defining moments in our nation's history. But his most enduring legacy will always be his commitment to nonviolent protest. <coughs> Our annual love march is not only a fitting tribute to that legacy, but also a means to teach the new generation the lessons we learn from his life and actions. I want to take a moment to thank the Reverend Gerald Hampton for participating at this year's, as this year's guest speaker, and to the Reverend Kennedy Hampton Sr. for continuing this community tradition established by their father. I also want to thank all of those gathered here today to participate in this steering reminder of Dr. King's peaceful yet forceful message. And for your generous support of the Reverend George W. Hampton Sr. Scholarship Fund, thank you for all that you do and please accept my very best wishes for a healthy and happy new year. Sincerely, Rosa DeLauro, member of Congress. Thank you so much. Going to have Garrett Winfield come, and uh, he's a new guy in town. So just do me a favor and be as supportive as you can of him. Because you need all the energy that you have, all that you know, to make what he seeks to do better. Thank you, Gary. Good afternoon, Church. Uh, I, I want to start off by doing something I haven't had the chance to do. 
it will be a day you will always remember. Yes. Always remember. And, it, and, it's, and, I, and I, I'm I, i a fond believer in these milestones. Because if you go back to 1968, what happened in 1968? You no, know, Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy were assassinated. 1968, exactly 40 years ago. Milestone, and I can remember where I was when that happened. Oh, I can remember that one. That was a milestone that you don't forget. Uh, the day that President Kennedy got shot. I remember a milestone. Hey, it's there. I'm going to remember that. Tuesday, hey, I'm going to remember that. Is, is take all of those milestones in your life. Because everyone has a significance <coughs> that you need to understand what it is. In 68, you knew what that was. You know? Uh, uh, 2008, you know what that was. Uh, uh, 1963, November 27th, you know what that was. You know, it's so like, your rep, you know what that was. Milestones in your life that tells a story about those things that were important to you. Because milestones you don't remember unless they have some value in your lives. You know? So you take all that value and you just kind of roll it around and say, that's who I am. That's what has impacted my life. That's what I must remember. Those are the things I must teach. Those are the things people need to know. That is who we are. All right. Those things that have left an indelible mark right. upon our existence. Always remember those milestones. Tuesday is a milestone. Right. Tuesday is a milestone. Be you old or young. It's a milestone on Tuesday. Right. If you're not there, be a TV somewhere. Right. And witness what takes place. And record in your minds the value, the meaning, the history of what it means. So I'm, I'm, I'm through preaching today. Gerald did that. You know, Sorry. So I just thought I needed to say that to you. And uh, it's always a pleasure being in the presence of a group of people that you can share, you know, experience, singing, preaching, history, all of it, because it makes us one. We are one. Don't ever forget that. We are one. Thank you very much. Brother Bill Dyson, thank you as always for a job well done. I have one friendly reminder that we will say a word and turn it back over into the hands of Pastor Gerald W. Hampton that he may come up and they, I know I threw the W and I'm thinking of my daddy, forgive me. Pastor Gerald Hampton, he will come up have the last word and the benediction and we shall overcome. Um, a friendly reminder to mention that YBC is kicking off a fundraiser for Martin Luther King's memorial in Washington, D.C. Um, that fundraiser will start today and go through the month of February. For additional information, you can listen to 94.3 WIBC. A letter coming down to his office complaining, griping, and trying to do everything in the spirit of love and making sure he got the message, amen? So we want to recognize our superintendent of school, Reverend Dr. Reverend O'Neill. Because in hell, we praise you again for taking the time out of this day to come and share it with us. And I say that because I know our superintendent had to make that possible as well, so he don't, he not going to, it's an excused absence, eh? <laughs> All right, we need to go. I just want to show you something and then we're going to go home. How many of you know Rosa Delora? Do you know her? Uh, Stanley Welch just stand up. 
He represents Rosa Delores. Is that not part of King's dream? I rest my case. Thank you, brother. To Carol Brown, I want Carol Brown to take the message back to the chief of police and tell him at Shadow Missionary Baptist Church on 100 Lawrence Street, it's open and available to all of God's people. Amen. And I want to tell Carol Brown, she got me in trouble on Sunday getting up there talking about, he looked more like my husband than my own sons. <laughs> Conversation for later time. I want to say to all of you, thank you for coming out and sharing with us to help make this day a success. Most certainly, we hope that you'll come downstairs in the Lower Fellowship Hall and join us with a bite to eat that we may continue in this part of the celebration. I am now going to decrease that my brother may come forth and increase yet again. But I must be honest, I would say it, but I have to say it today. That boy preached, didn't he preach? <laughs> Did he not preach today? Truly our hearts were burning and yearning as the word of God came forth. And as all has been said, that we must recognize those that came before us. Well, he came before me, eh? <laughs> so we recognize him on this day. Brother Wimper, I'm just going to say this, my brother. Man, you have the right stuff. You hear me, Doc? Because you are able to recognize, and I'm going to remind you, I have everything he has till he just shrivel up, that you just blow up, all right? Give it all while you can. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. I'm now going to turn it back over to the well capable hands of the Reverend Gerald Hampton, who will then have his words and then lead us into that old Negro national anthem, We Shall Overcome. To Tom Fishman, who's in the back, we thank you for coming and remaining from the beginning to the end of the service. To Brother Melvin, we thank you for speaking. We thank you for all of you. I remember Lee, boy, I'm totally impressed, man. I'm going to start eating more carrots and all that stuff that helps your memory retention or whatever that might be. Boy, you got that thing down. That boy did I have a dream speak from memory. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. I'll tell you, boy, that's all right. Brother, come forward at this hour. Let me embrace you. Shake your hand for a job well Thank everyone today. Uh, it would be a poor shepherd if he came and did not have any sheep. And so I'm grateful for the bread of life. Will you come? Will you all stand, please? There in Stanford, Georgia. Uh, I'm glad to see. Um, I'm so happy to see uh, Reggie Mayo. I had wrote down here that I was going to speak on his behalf because uh, I know that he's normally here every year, and we never have to send him. My father only missed him one year, and I think he'll never ever forget. And so I'll let my pop know you were late, but you're here. So I will be grateful to see you, Doctor. Why? Because Reggie is a great inspiration. He's the head of our schools, and our children are doing as well as they can be. And so we used to have a black, uh, what they call him, chief of police, but now Melvin is gone. And so you don't see the chief here, but we still have a superintendent of school. Amen. And so we need to continue to support him, because that which comes after him is going to make some significant changes. So you better do like the old folks used to do. Get it while you can get it. Because soon it will be gone. And when it's gone, you can't get what's already left the house. Are you hearing me? Uh, brother Winfield, of course, we say congratulations to you, brother. We know you had a struggle in your election, but we were ones that supported you. You have a great deal of support that came out of that Eddie's Barbershop. Before we talked about you, we talked about you, we knew the struggle, we knew it all. But you have more support than that which you've seen. And the further you go, we will come out the cracks to support you. But there are many of us who are watching you. Because the shoes that you're trying to fill are very big. But we encourage you to continue on and do the best that you can. 
What Dyson didn't achieve, we are expecting you to do that. All right, now. Whatever goal he didn't reach, we are expecting you to exceed that. All right. So you have our support behind you, and there are greater achievements in New Haven that will avail themselves soon after time. We thank everyone. Stanley Welch, I know that you've been here, and I've argued with him at one time because I'm like, man, where is Rosa? It's not seeing you, but where's Rosa? But he reminded me one year that he represents Rosa, and she, even though she's not here, she's still working on our behalf. Right. And that year that she got us inducted was truly proof, because to those who don't know, the Love March is recorded in the history of the federal government of the United States of America through Rosa Delora. So she is doing her work, and we appreciate you, Stanley. You've been here about every year, I believe so, too. Even when she came, you were here. So he's been here. <laughs> to Bill Dyson, of course, you know, we all know Bill, but you can't take him for granted. But as he's climbed the ladders of success, he has not forgotten from whence he's come. And so we're... So, I'm saying you don't understand it, but you will by and by. I want to say thank you all, Carol Brown, to all the musicians, ushers, everyone here, my children, my family, with my daughter Stan, my son Stan, Patrice, Siobhan, where are you? Oh, this is Elijah, and my wife Terry. Oh, Siobhan went to ECA. Um, all right, that hearts and minds are clear. Let us stand and let's look forward to being dismissed. Still racism is still running rampant. Don't be fooled by the election to make you think that everything is all right. Because what's going to happen is that they're going to begin to use that against us to turn back the hands of time. It's good to see Obama, but the Bible teaches us that you need to watch as well as pray. And so, don't get so hooked and overwhelmed with Barack that you don't look at what's happening right next door to you. Because this work is still yet to be done. They're looking at that's why you find that when they say all the time when the federal government sneezes, we catch the flu in our neighborhood. So you need to watch as well as pray. Help create new opportunities. Don't lay down and just ask, but keep that creativity going and you'll see that we'll make it out. All right, brother, come on.
to our Father and our God, who have kept us, who has preserved us, who have strengthened us, who have led us, who have kept us and overshadowed us. Lord, as we come before thy throne this day, we thank you for another day of the love march. We thank you for another day of coming together as a people. We thank you for sharing your spirit with us. And all things that we've done here, Lord, we pray that we be found acceptable for thy sake. Bless our politicians as they go forward, thank you, God. Thank you. And as we bear a new generation, that they will continue to watch over and continue to do the best that they can. As we now endeavor to leave this place, but never from your presence, we ask that your love will rest, rule, and divide 